There we go. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Let me just quickly get the chat out here so I can see. There you guys are. How are you all doing? It is not Tuesday, but in fact, it's Wednesday today. Joe asks, so Howard is getting blamed again. We always blame Howard. It doesn't matter that Howard is 25,000 light years away. We can still blame him for everything. <laughs> when in doubt, blame Howard. Exactly. That's going to be the mantra for today. So as you can probably guess, the plan today is... Uh, I'm going to be over on my exploration character. Um, last exploration stream, we made it into the center of the galaxy. And um, I'm going to be heading back to Colonia. Two reasons. Um, I haven't actually unlocked the Odyssey Engineers in Colonia on any of my characters, so I thought that could be fun to do. And I also kind of want to... I've mean, been flying around in the, in the Crate Phantom now for like half a year, a year maybe, something like that. So I feel like I need a change of scenery, so I'm going to go and, and build something else when we come back there. So that's the plan. How is Howard going to walk to Colonia without a ship? Yes, that's difficult. I think the only way Howard can get to Colonia would be to hitchhike on board a fleet carrier, but again, he can't get on fleet carriers himself either, so he's going to need someone to pick him up at a station, fly him to a fleet carrier, and then he's going to stay in the fleet carrier while someone else flies the fleet carrier to Colonia, and then someone needs to actually go and pick him up and fly him off the carrier again in the other end, because again, there's no shuttles off carriers, so he can't actually get ordered off the carriers by himself. But if he takes an escape pod out in Colonia, he's going to be sent back to the bubble. So he has to have someone that picks him up and fly him off the carrier. It's a bit... It's a bit of a project. I was actually considering... I mean... That it could be fun to go and try to get a fleet carrier on Howard. Not because I want to keep it for, for an extended period, but just to have it. Just having a fleet carrier on a character that has never even set foot inside a Sidewinder. <laughs> mm. Yeah, Jeff, you're right. We should set a light goal. 42 is a bit of the low, <clears throat> the low end, I think. We can, I think you guys can do better than that. Let's just see how many people are we today. Right now we are... When YouTube decides to update. There we go. Hello, YouTube. 117 right now. I think you guys could do, what, 150? I'm going to give you 152, maybe. Should we go? What do you guys think of that? We should be able to go 152. Third goal. Let's see if I can remember this. Third goal. 152. Yeah, 152 should be easy. Is that it? Is that the right command? Hello, bot? Damn it. I can never remember the bot commands. They do use exclamation mark, don't they? Damn it, Howard, you broke the bot. Is it set like goal? I think it's just set goal. Is the bot working at all? I think it says stream elements is running. And the bot is here. Damn it, Howard, you broke the bot. It's not slash commands, it is F in chat for the bot. <sighs> See, we haven't even we haven't even gotten in game and Howard already broke something. <sighs> okay, well. I'm gonna have to fix the bot then, but we can keep uh, we can <laughs> if it if it chat for the dead bot, um, we can uh, we can remember. I can think I can still see the likes just manually here. Yeah, we can see that we were oh we're at forty seven. Great, you guys are gonna have to keep me uh, to help me keep an eye on that little like counter. So for those of you who may be new to the live stream, um. What I always do is I set up a like goal on every live stream. And if you help me by liking the live stream, 
get the live stream ranked in the almighty YouTube algorithm, I will then set up a discount code um, for the merch store where you get 10% off and I'll keep that code until the end of the live stream as a thank you to you guys for helping me get the, get the live stream ranked in the algorithm. So, if you haven't liked the live stream already, please go down and do so. Um, and as always, the merch store is at d2yastore.com if you're interested. But, without further ado, I think we are going to just go over on here and um, we are ex I can't say that. We are at Explorers Atronach. Atronach, I think that's... Oh, I need to, I need to actually click into the game. There we go. Um, and I think we've done everything there is to do here. We sold our cartography data last time. So we're pretty much just ready to go. Maybe we should set a route. Set all that up because it's a bit dense in here with stars. So let's set up some filters to make things a little bit more fun. Uh, we want stars F and G. Like, so we don't want those heavy UV heavy stars. They're going to destroy all that lovely, lovely amino acids that it meets. We're not going to get any life on the planets. Um, don't forget the limpets. I'll synthesize limpets if I need them. Don't want to carry them around. They cut into my jump range. And I don't need them that much. Um, I had a place in mind, though. Yes, here. I always, like on exploration ships, I like to just synthesize limpets on the go because, well, they're too heavy to carry around. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. There was this nebula down here that looked awesome. You see that? Awesome looking nebula. And I want to go and visit that. So, um... It is just... <laughs> 4,700 light years away. And even though that's not really... In, I mean, Colonia is there. So we are kind of heading... Not closer to Colonia at all. Um, but I really wanted to go and visit and see it. So that's why I'm heading there first. So it's going to be a little... There and then into Colonia. Um, yeah. Not that we're going to make it that far today. Again, for those of you who've been watching my exploration streams before, you will know that I like to take a very slow and steady approach to exploration. I'm not running on the neutron highway. We're here to, uh, to see the site as well, the roses, and that's what we're going to do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. As Dr. Tijus says, like, look, look close at the stars around the nebula. My plan is, we of course got to go inside the nebula. I mean, that's that's a must, right? But the main thing is I actually want to get some uh, some shots of that nebula up close. So, from outside. So, with 86 jumps to go, we're going to boost out of the mass lock. And we're gonna get the first jump down. What ship am I thinking instead of the Phantom once you're back at Colonia? I haven't decided. Um, I'm really, really liking the, the, the Dolphin at the moment, but I have a Dolphin that I fly all the time on my main character, so I don't think I'm gonna go Dolphin. So I was thinking Orca maybe could be fun to do. I mean, they're kind of pretty and it's a dolphin but bigger i don't really think i'm not sure if the if the auger has the same like heat management as uh, as the dolphin does but eh, would be imperial courier i think there's a little too bare bone i have i need some creature comforts <laughs> yeah the auger has a surprisingly high jump range that's why i'm considering it okay let's see what we got we got nothing and moving on then it has a pretty good jump range. Clipper would be a pain, uh, jump range-wise, I think. Beluger. I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards... Um, because I've done Asps, I've done Diamondbacks, and, 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 and all that. <laughs> and here we go, Type 10. Like, so, so I, I wanna... I don't know. Sidewinder. Sidewinder, you can actually get a pretty decent jump rate Sidewinder, but again, 
creature comforts. Like, I, I want a decent fuel scoop, I want some decent heat capacity, I want to have, like, SRV base, I want to have at least two so that I can mess up because, well, I have a tendency to do stupid things when I'm out exploring and sometimes you lose the SRV and it's nice to have one in backup. Fertile land, you see, now, now you're just picking the worst jump range ships you guys can think of. <laughs> and there is nothing there either, let's move on. So I don't know. Asp Explorer. Again, I wanna do I have done I've been exploring a lot in the Asp. That was the first trip ever was to the core and back in an Asp. I've been flying anacondas for years, I've been flying diamondbacks. I mean maybe Imperial Courier could be fun. It's something different at least. Nothing says serious pilot that a ship that has its own gravity well. True that. Panda Clipper. <laughs> yeah, so so just wait until we get new ships. So I think I'm gonna have to make another detour. Exploration Python. I flew a Python from the bubble and out on my original trip on this character from the bubble and out. That was on an, in an exploration python. Nothing there. Type 7s would be half a planet landing as scouts. Or maybe it's the option to could just go Beluga. I don't know. Really want the Panther Clipper X. I I have a I have a feeling that's not gonna happen. <laughs> I don't know, but yeah. And what has it been now? Four years since we got the um, last time we got a new ship in the game was it the Mamba? Was that four years ago? Four years with no new ships in a spaceship game. Uh, we're still outside the interesting range here. I should probably move my camera actually so you guys can see. Yeah, you guys can actually see what's going on when I begin to do the scanning. I was just for, for a second, I was considering uh, maybe I should just put it up for a vote and let you guys decide. But I, I'm, uh, I, I know what you guys are gonna do. You're gonna make me fly a mamba or something. <laughs> Seems like Star Citizen can't go four months without the new ship. At least a new ground vehicle. <laughs> True. Type 7 has a great view. That is true. You don't get a much better view than under Type 7. Fleet Carrier was a new ship. Yeah. I guess, kind of. I don't really know if that counts. I mean, belugas are are an interesting are interesting, right? I mean, normally I'm not a big fan of the beluga simply because it's well always gets stuck in the uh, in the toaster rack. But that's not a problem when when we're out here, when we're out exploring, because there's no toaster racks out here. Beluga is probably too big for planet surfaces. Yeah, it's gonna be difficult to find a good place to land that thing. What do you guys really think? Okay, we gonna. I'm gonna have to. Like, what kind of jump range do we get out of a Type 7? Explore Challenger. Now, that's something I have not heard of before. Like what kind of what kind of jump range? If you if you like uh, if you derate all the uh, the core internals and and then uh, just uh, a rate the uh, all girls a decent jump range. Type seven thermals are super bad. Do you want a medium or large ship? Preferably medium. I think kind of that's a sweet spot for me because I do want that that double SRV hanger. Um. 
and I also want at least oh, what the hell happened there? And I also want at least uh, like 60 light years ish. I mean, if it's 59, then it's fine. But I want around 60 light years or more in jump range, just so that I can actually get places without it taking like months. Great fans of <laughs> and now we got full circle and now we need to go to Colonia then. Elite should make a sort of cougar exploration ship called the Novel. Huge sensor array at the front. Like the horn of the day. Yeah, that would actually be fun. Big antenna out of the in the in the nose. Doing for fuel here. Actually, okay, let's just go and scoop a bit of fuel here. Check the FSS. There's nothing in that bracket that we're looking for. You can make a diamond back jump far, yeah? I know. They are, are also dedicated. Oh, they're kind of like a. The, the, the combat exploration ship, right? I mean, with those large hard point, at least on the explorer version. Hauler. Again, I need I need to fit that size too. I really I'm, I'm, I don't know. I I think I'm gonna make a decision when I get back. I am what I'm planning is to make like an exploration built live stream where we just play around with different ships and try to see what we can do um, in terms of jump range. Just build something. Um, Elite needs more ships. It would be nice, yeah. I wouldn't mind a batch of new ships. A dedicated exploration large ship, yeah. Just strip down the weapons, good jump range. The thing with the... Well, that's the Type 9. The Type 9 has that massive, massive fuel tank. That means you can just go forever without actually having to refuel. I think there was somebody that actually once flew a Type 9 from the from Seoul to Colonia without a fuel scoop <laughs> on economic routing and just filled it all with fuel tanks. The thing will just keep going. Isn't that the Anaconda for a dedicated large exploration? It's not a dedicated exploration ship. The Anaconda is classified as multi-purpose. I mean, it works well as a combat ship, it works well as, as, yeah, as a lot of things. You can make a decent mining ship out of it if you want to. That would have been in the thousands of jumps, yeah, likely. We got something. What do we got? Uh, we got ourselves at least one water world. Wait, right, let's get some distance to the star and let's get some scanning. Unconventional exploration stream. Yes, that would be fun. And that's the plan at least. Like take something that's not like the usual Asp Phantom Diamondbacks and then just go and, and build something. Like build an uh, exploration sidewinder and see how uh, how that would perform. Wait. Okay. Zero that. Let's get to scanning. 
We have nine planets in system. And we're just gonna check if there's anything fun here other than the uh, other than that water world. Okay, we got oh, we got three of them here. Almost missed some. We got a icy body, and we got what is that? High metal content. That's good because they can be quite valuable. I think that is that's another that's another snowball. Um, that's the water world. There it is. Very boring water world. But a water world nonetheless. Uh, multiple planets here. Snowball and another snowball. Yeah. Double snowball. There's one more. There it is. System scan completed. Close FSS. Let's take a look at the map. There's that water world. And not yet mapped. This body is a candidate for terraforming, so we have a terraformable high metal content. And we got a water world. Good. Start with the high metal content. Move on to the water world. Nice. So we at least have a bit of money when we come back. Very little on the last trip. We were just shy of half a billion credits. Plenty to build an exploration ship, but still. Wait for the range. Surface scanner. Still too far, and then you can slow down now. This is a big planet. Okay, it's six probes, so we're gonna do a standard pattern on this. Wait for the reload. There we go. Uh, it was late. Where are we going? We're heading out to a uh, to a supernova remnant. It's like just over four thousand light years from uh, from the core. Um, probably not gonna make it today, but that doesn't matter. Maybe we'll make it next time. Yeah, it looked super cool. There should be some pretty screenshots there. Someone mentioned on the last exploration stream said I should I should go there and it looked cool on the map so uh, now we're going there. It's only four thousand light years after all. Type seven with D-rated stuff with the Union Guardian FSD booster, six A fuel scoop, six G SRV bay. Detail service scanner, super cruise assist, advanced docking computer, two extra ammo, heat sinks, no shields, 56 light years. Not too bad. A little on the low end and with poor heat management, it's gonna be an annoying thing to fuel scoop in. But not a bad, like, not a bad ship for the, uh, like, I mean, it's a Type 7. <laughs> is G the, li the lightest as of eBay? Yes, it is. Oh. Sitting here reading you guys' chat. Ooh. 
Oui Let's get around on the uh, on the day side of the planet so we can actually take a look at it. And I believe we were even the first to discover this one. It hasn't been mapped before, at least. Well, that is nice. Okay, slow us down. And this is six probes, so uh, again, where's the mist marker? It's there, so let's just do a standard pattern again. There we go. Better hit on the backside. Oh, that's perfect. Almost, at least. Okay. We are done here. Target next system route, and let's jump. <laughs> Joseph Hitchhiker says, Damn it, Howard, because of you, I had to work late and now I'm, I'm late for the live stream. <laughs> Good evening, Joseph. Uh, one Twitch says, Planning to take my DBX out into the black. Hold on, I'm just gonna wash my water here so I don't put water into my keyboard. Um, to black after the New Year's. Still going, still doing some tweaking in engineering. Heading to Sake. Yeah, that's a nice trip. And, and honk and nothing. Oh, what was that? That black dot there? Is that Andromeda? Yeah, it is Andromeda. That's odd. Just check in the next system as well, if it does the same thing. Now Howard broke a drum and I <laughs> even broke another galaxy now. <laughs> okay, honk the system, scoop some fuel, 17 buddies, check the thingy, nothing in the range we're looking for. Uh, could we spot, where did, uh, where did Andromeda go? Andromeda, where are you? It should be like here ish. Given the direction we are traveling, it should be. We're heading slightly below the galactic plane. So it should be like up here? No, where is Andromeda? It's over there. There it is. I was just upside down. Let's check FSS. Yeah, okay. And Andromeda is just a black spot on the FSS scanner.
First time watching streams on Twitch. Have you watched Father Bill streams here before? Um, not a lot. But I have watched uh, a few minutes of a stream now and then, I think. What planets? That's just a star, isn't it? Yeah, it is. We're making some good progress today. We started out at what? 80 something? 86? How have we already done 14 jumps? Um, are you liking Hoaxas instead of Hoaxas? Yes. So, uh, it's only recently that I swapped over. Uh, it's, it's quite a while since I swapped over to Hoaxas. But it's only recently I swapped over to uh, a Hoaxas setup with a proper omnidirectional throttle. Where the, the forward-backwards axis actually works as a throttle. So it will stay in place. And it doesn't auto-recenter. Um, as it usually does with a Hoaxas setup. And that I'm still getting getting used to, but it's becoming more and more natural. But that's how it always is when you swap out your uh, um, your layout, your binding layout. Then it, it always becomes a little bit less like intuitive, at least for a while, until you until you have a few hours. Sustain it, Howard. You made my DPX explode twenty three thousand light. No, did you lose your DPX? No. <laughs> Hopefully you didn't get sent back to the bubble. That's so disheartening. And system scan completed so there's nothing here again fly nice and close get some fuel yeah I like I like to fly with uh, as you can see here I like to fly with shields my shields are this is super weak oh hey the bot is working again Calvin made the bot work. Thank you, Calvin, for, for, for fixing all the stuff Howard broke. System scan complete. That means only a single star. I really enjoy this game, except for the loss of momentum in space. The loss of inertia as if you have uh, have wing flaps in, in space. Um, you can just fly FA off, just disable flight assist, and there you go. Full Newtonian physics. Hold on, Calvin, I'll, I'll give you credit for fixing the bot. <laughs> okay, check the scanner. Nothing of interest on the scanner. Moving on. Oh, we've done 20 jumps. How are we doing? We're really burning through some, uh, some distance here today. But again, we need to get through, what, 40 jumps or something, if we want to get the usual halfway mark. Like, usually I do around a thousand light years um, uh, per hour when I'm live streaming on this build. Um, and when I fly with this exploration method. And we've done, like, 500 in the last half hour. Oh, oh. Are we going to get sidewinded? No, we're not. <laughs> How are the bunnies doing today? The bunnies are sleeping. Two bunnies sleeping right there. 
Is there rest stops on the way? I don't think there's rest stops on the way. It doesn't really matter if there is. I'm not planning to stop. I'm just planning to go, go, go until we're back in Colonia. It's really not having a whole lot of luck with my uh, with my water wells. You have a secret lab chair. I have a plastic spinning chair from IKEA. I like my secret lab. I've had this. I had it for many years now. I can't even remember when I got this, but it's many years ago. Um, Jan asks, "What ship are you in?" I am in a Great Phantom. And it's holding up really nice. Nice thing about the GPX is you don't have to worry much about heat. No, but you also got to be sitting inside the star for like a day and a half every time you want to fill up your fuel tank. Oh, is that... Is that right on the edge? Is that one of those trolley ones? No. Oh, no. Rocky, ah, that's a rock. It is one of those right on the edge there. Because that's where water will start. And one tick over and it's a rocky ice. That's a rocky ice, but it's so close to being in Earth-like territory. I love my secret lab chairs, but I but I need to replace the arm pads. That's funny. I've seen some people say they have problems with the arm pads. My arm pads are still as if they were new. A little scuff marks there on the front, maybe, but purely cosmetic things. Um, do I prefer VR for this game than monitor? No, I really prefer monitors. Um, I have played the game in VR, also quite a bit. But I found that I would often not really use the VR headset, but that's also because most of the times when I'm in game, I will be either streaming or recording, or maybe I'm doing some research for videos, stuff like that. And VR is not really that good for that, those kind of things, because I'm not going to stream, not going to record in VR. Um, it gets too all over the place for me. Um, and when I'm doing research for videos, I will often go and I'll try something in-game, then I'll tap out and I'll write some notes for myself. And or maybe I'll go and look something up on an hour or someplace else, and, and, and then I'll go back in-game and do some things and tap all over the place. So their VR doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, Elite is a great game in, in, uh, in VR, and I still think one of the best VR games that exists. Um, maybe not after Odyssey, or with Odyssey update, because... Ah, VR support for that has been lacking at best. Um, but prior to Odyssey, at least it was one of the one of the better titles for it. But it seems Frontier has, over the last last many many years, been focusing less and less on um, on the VR side of the game, which I think is a shame because it was one of the big selling points I think for a lot of people when they got into the game. So seeing them ditch that is a bit of a shame. Most of says, I joined Elite because of VR, exactly, and I think there's a lot of people like you. And also a lot of those people have been very vocal and very disappointed with Frontier's decision. But I, I, I get it, I, making making VR work well in on-foot is not easy, for, like, for on-foot gameplay, it's not easy. Right, without it being an absolutely vomit comet of a game. But I can also see, I mean, I can see Frontier's Dilemma here, right? That that they have a game where they have this 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 amazing VR support, but they want to add on-foot content, and they know that it's going to be difficult to do a VR implementation of on-foot content. So what do you do? Do you hold yourself back and do not implement on-foot combat because you want to keep that VR experience? Or do you do as they did and basically say, okay, they're slowly going to begin to ditch the VR support for, for new content, um, but then allow themselves more freedom to choose what kind of content they want to add into the game, if that makes sense. Because 
if you want to go full on VR, it, it does put restrictions on what you can do and what you can't do. Um, because you can't just put a camera like you would in a normal first person shooter on people. It will work well for some people, I'm sure. But for most people, it's gonna be um, it's gonna be turning your turning your stomach around. Oh, we got we got double up here on stuff. Look, let's see. Is that actually an ammonia world? Yeah, we got an ammonia world and a water world. Oh yeah, I've not never find these ammonia worlds. Never. Let's get outside scoop range. Nice. I think this is the first Ammonia world I found since I left Colonia. I never come across these. Okay, let's go. Ammonia worlds. We also have 31 planets in this system. My guess is gonna be either some. There's at least one, two gas giants there. So either it's a gas of gas giants with a ton of moons on, or we're dealing with a secondary star or double star system here. At least there's gonna be a lot of moons somewhere. You don't have 31 main planets in a system. Oh, there's the water world. Hello, water world. Hello, very boring looking water world. But you also have a moon, little bitty. Little rocky moon. Look at that. Pretty little thing. What else do we have? We have something there. What are you? It's a gas giant. One of them at least. Yeah. Here we go. Okay, so there are at least two gas giants here. But there's also... A million ice moons, I guess. Oh, I'm actually rocky, okay. We even have moons orbiting moons around the... the Yeah, we should actually probably pay attention to the to what's on to the locations here. Because now that we have ammonia planets in system, that could make it a lot more interesting. Uh where am I where did the thingy go? There's the thingy, so you can adjust the tuning knob. See nothing there, icy buddy. Nothing there. And another double one. Nothing. And wait for the scan. No features and no locations. Okay. Oh, we got biologicals here. 9E. We probably got some... Got four different ones. There should be plants there. Oh, okay. Maybe we should go and check that out. That would be fun. 9E. You guys help me remember that. Oh, there's more moons. This doesn't stop, does it? Ooh, and the ringed moon around a ringed planet with more biologicals. Nine I. Oh, look at that. That's a captured moon. Look at that orbit. So you have all of them sitting there in the plane. That means that's a captured. That must be tiny then. Yeah, eight, eight, nine percent Earth mass. Half the radius of Earth. Cool. We're gonna head to planet 9. There's all kinds of things happening out there. And there's our ammonia world. Look at that thing. Yeah, gravity was relatively high for a moon. Okay, we still have... 12 objects in system, but it's probably all gonna be... At least a lot of them's gonna be around this gas giant here. That's gonna be my guess. Oh, that's pretty too. Look at that. Maybe we should go and visit Planet 10 as well. And we got geologicals on this one. They're less interesting. Biologicals are more fun. Yeah, this is a nice system. Oh. 
Didn't finish my scans. This is what always happens when I'm out exploring. You'll get some really good speed up, you just cover system after system in rapid, rapid succession. And then suddenly you come across something where you, you find something interesting and then you stop and now I'm gonna spend like an hour here looking at things. More geologicals. Again, I'm not too interested in the geological stuff. More geological stuff. Planet 10. Ten J. Oh, Ten J also has biologicals on it. And now we just have one planet left somewhere. And it's there. High metal content world. Okay, let's go and have a look at this system because look at all those booms. Okay, let's just start from the beginning and see what we got here. So. None of these are candidates for terraforming. That one is, is a candidate for terraforming. There's the water world. A rocky... A rocky terraformable. Er? Okay. And there's the ammonia. So then we're gonna take this cluster here. And then we're gonna head out. Oh, look at that. That's perfect. This one is not only landable, but it also has an atmosphere and a ring. A shame it wasn't closer to the main planet. That would be cool. But let's just go and uh, start by scanning that. Then hop up to jump out to the, uh, to the water world. Were we actually the first... Were we the first in system? Yes, we are! Oh, this is our little system! What are you doing, bunnies? Where do you go? Hello. Slow us down. Maybe not that much. But atmospheric planets, landable atmospheric planets with rings. It's probably too far away from the parent gas giant that we can see it, like for real, but. Alright, okay, let's slow us down before we get too far into the gravity well of this thing. Okay, we got seven. That's a big planet, but we should be able to do it with a standard six pro pattern. There you go. Someone says, do you also play Star Citizen? I do. I play both. Today we're playing Elite, though. Star Citizen, maybe next week. Uh, what are we doing here? We're done scanning. Waterworld. Good evening, my Diago. Aku, maybe, even. <laughs> How to stay the bubble? This is a nice system. 
just can't seem to get into Star Citizen. No, I can understand that it's not everybody's cup of tea. But for me at least, it, it scratches a different itch. It just says, what's your object objective today? Objective is to fly spaceships. We're basically just out exploring. We're heading towards, uh, it's not really a deputy, it's more of a supernova remnant. We're gonna head out and have a look at that. Um, not sure we're gonna make it today, but we're gonna make some progress towards it. Thomas says, I've played about a thousand hours on Elite Dangerous. Oh, welcome to the game. Nice to see new players around. <laughs> Sorry, but no. It's it's been a joke for years that 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 like there are some people who have spent absurd amount of time and we are talking eight, nine, ten plus thousand hours in the game. Um and, and people with less than a thousand dollars is often seen as, as new-ish players. <laughs> it's, it's a bit of a joke, but it's still funny. I'm actually curious how many hours I have on this character. I should go and look. This is my secondary character, by the way. I have a main character. Okay, we should be in range. Oh, we are a little far away. I hope it's gonna be fine. I'm just curious how many hours I have on this character. Uh, stats... Explore exploration. Approximate time played one week, two days, and four hours. Calculator. That's seven days times twenty-four. That's a hundred and sixty-eight plus. Actually, that is nine times 21. So that's like 200 and something hours on this character. So not a lot. Okay, should we just scan the moon while we're here? Not sure if it's really worth it, but let's do it anyway. How many alts do I have? I have three accounts in total. I have my main account. Um, I have this one, which is my exploration account. And then I have Howard, which is my on-food only account. down and this is actually a six pro planet so we can actually just oh where did that go I missed that by a I didn't even get that close to where it's supposed to be um, so what do we do we post the one uh, I don't know there maybe we'll see if it works See, that one was a little bit far on the, on the back side, so oh, I should have put it on the other side. That was a stupid shot, this last probe there. Oh, we got it anyway. Hmm. 
Monia World, let's go. Um, Maverick says, I want to set up one up, so that would be a second account for my son. Can he play from the same location AI multi crew with me from his laptop uh, to my PC? Yes, absolutely. Um, as long as you do not, like, I don't know if you have, like, family share with, with Steam or something like that, because I'm not sure if that will work or how that would work. I, but, but if you can, there's nothing preventing you from... Um, from running two really dangerous account on two different PCs in the same network and, and play together. That absolutely works. No problems. And because it's P2P, you might actually have a very good multi-crew experience. Um, because it's always been the downside of multi-crew is that this, it was I have was plagued by um, was plagued by stability issues, right? Um. But because that the, the networking in Elite is P2P, and when you're sitting on the same network right next to each other, you should have a much more stable connection and therefore also a better play experience. Yeah, frontier. Okay, so just need to make a second Frontier account um, on a separate separate email and then yeah, one on one PC and one on the other, and then you're good to go. I have a video on... Um, on how to set up so you can play or you can easily access multiple accounts uh, it doesn't work necessarily playing two accounts at the same time but you can access multiple accounts at the same time um well not at the same time but but you can make shortcuts so you can easily swap between accounts if you want to give him access to play on your computer as well i don't know how you want to do that but there's some videos out on that look at that ammonia world Uh, sorry. And away with the probe. <laughs> Thank you. Why does Howard have a fine? This is not Howard. Uh, and I don't know why I have a fine. A hundred thousand credits? Did I steal something? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know North Citizen, that, that video is from... It, I'm just saying, if he wanted his son to be able to maybe also sometimes use his computer, then you could... Um, you could set it up so there would be one shortcut to use on one account and one shortcut that you use for the other account. It is a big fight. I don't know what I did. Can't remember. I probably stole something that I shouldn't. Stole a power regulator or something back in uh, in Colonia. Okay, where was the the fun things? It was I and Jay or something. Let me see. You guys posted it in chat. E and I. It was ten J. E and I. So let's see here. E and and I. Okay, to start with E. Let me take the pretty one afterwards. If it's just like... No, no, no. This character is... This is not Howard. This character is the... I think it's just called Down to Earth Astronomy, actually. Um, Howard is in the bubble. Howard doesn't fly spaceships. And how it has stolen a lot of power regulators. Ah, yeah, how does it? Yeah, 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 yeah. So how it stole a power regulator and and blamed me. So now I got a fine because how it stole it. That's you're right. I forgot. Everything is Howard's fault. Would Howard ride a fleet carrier to Colonia to unlock those engineers uh, for ground? Or does he not need them? He doesn't really need them. 
Um, and it's also a, a bit of a... It's going to require a bit of planning to get Howard to Colonia. <laughs> Why is everybody blaming me behind a Howard in chat? It's Howard O'Connor we are blaming, to be more specific. Apex, you can't Apex to a fleet carrier. I know it's stupid, but you can't. You should be able to, I think. But Frontier says no. Uh, okay. So this one should have, was it four? Four bio signatures? Apex to Colonia? No. There's too far between the stations. They did start the Colonia Bridge project, but the distance between the stations is too far, so we can't go there. You can only go 100 light years at a time in an Apex shuttle. And even if there were enough stations, it would be around 32, I think I calculated, around 32 hours of constant Apex flying. Where you have to just sit, wait for five minutes as it goes to the next stop, go out, book a new shuttle, go in. Let's keep doing that. Okay, oh, only four. Uh, so let's just do like the, the, the triangle thing then. There we go. So, what do we have? Tubus. I have no idea what this is. Bacterium is those flat ones. Those are not interesting. Tubus. Let's go. Let's look at Tubus. I don't know what Tubus is. Um, hold on. Are we, at the, we are on the light side. Okay. So... Basically, go anywhere, I guess. Uh, maybe coming down a little fast here. That's better. Tubis are annoying to collect. We'll see what we find. Did I even bring a map? I, I do have an Artemis suit. Nice. I came prepared. Oh, there's some green areas. So I think that's the bacteria pattern we see there. Let's just try to put this thing down somewhere. I should probably brought this SRV. Footfall. Where is my scanner? There it was.
Oh, oops. See, there's also some there. Wait, what? Look at the temperature. Now it's freezing cold. And now it's okay. But if I go into the shadow, I'm about to freeze to death. Wait, let's get an SRV. So we can move a little quicker. Let's go for this patch over here, see if that's enough distance. It was. See what you can find. That was a big patch here. Let's see if that's better. Or if that is enough distance. No, it's not. I need a little bit more distance. There's a patch over there on the right. You should go for that. Hello, cactus. There we go. There it is. Whee! Oh, there's also tiny ones, tiny plants there. Yes. We did a thing. Now, I'm not sure if this is the this is not cactus. This is something else. Yeah, it kind of looked like lavender. Um, let's just keep going, see if we can find more of that stuff. There's more of it here, but we probably need more, a bit more distance, so we're just gonna go out here in this direction. There's some there, I wonder how much distance we need for this.
That was apparently enough. See, we can find some more of it. There's some over there on the, to, the, to the left. And that should be a complete scan. There we go. Oh, hold on. We got spam parts in chat. And... Uh, hide user from this channel. Goodbye. So now we can do the cactus. Cactus things. More like bamboo. All right, let's go and let's see if we can find some more cactus. They're pretty easy to find, so. Oh, there's a lot of stuff over there. Let's go and take a look at that. Oh, look at that. Scanning, scanning, scanning. Weren't there four different types on this planet? Or did I recall this incorrectly? There was four, right? I've only seen three so far. Oh, insufficient. What if we take this one over here? Need to go further. Okay. Never mind. Back to the SRV. Gonna take the next cluster over. See that down there looks like the the lavender type. Are you happy now? Yes. Cactus scan completed. Okay. <laughs> so now we just need to find the last type of plant. Damn it, Howard. Why did you put a cactus there?
how much that canister usually worth. Not enough that it's really u worth your time, but it's fun. Oh, this is going to be a rough landing. Uh. Let's go down the hill and have a look what we can find. More of that stuff that we already scanned. More stuff we already scanned. Ah, oh, come on. Oh, there it is. Okay, just need to find two more of those. At least now we know what we're looking for. Thargoid poop, yes. So we found it on like a hillside. I don't know if, if Frontiers made it made the biomes that detailed. Whoa, this thing is all over the place. And we didn't really see them out here on these flat plains, so I think what I'm gonna do. Is apparently fly backwards for a bit. That's okay, we can explore backwards. Gotta make the landing a little harder. Let's head back up towards the hillsides here. That's what I got it. I found a Thargoid poop. Pull the brake, stop. Okay. One more and we're done here. There's one. Right there. Small one. Oh, and what we're gonna do? So we're gonna recall the ship. Oh, 
I was going to say, where's my ship? Okay, Howard, don't mess it up. Are you going to land on top of me? Don't you dare. For once, the ship actually landed close to you. That was a close land. Maybe if you record it on foot, it lands closer to you. No, that does. that's not true. It's sometimes it's on foot, it lands like a 10 minute walk away. No, that was nice. Okay. This was planet 9E or moon 9E. Now we get to the fun part. We get to go out and look at the uh, at the I planet because that has rings and it has an atmosphere and it has all kinds of things. It's gonna be fun and hopefully there's also some pretty plants. So I think there were three biologicals on this one if I recall. Very nice. All the data. Super happy fun times ahead. Exactly. So while we are heading out towards the next planet, if you haven't liked the live stream already, I would really appreciate if you would consider doing so, as it really does help a lot getting it ranked in the almighty YouTube algorithm. And if we get up to the like goal today, which is 152 likes, I don't even know how far we are, but if we get there, I'll be setting up a discount code for you guys over on the merch store, which you can find at d2hstore.com. You can find t-shirts and mugs and new desk mats. Ooh. One thirty-eight out of one fifty-two. That's okay. We're getting there. We should search for Howard's lost sibling. So we need to find another O'Connor. Oh, we're one fifty-five. Well, while we're flying to this planet, Scott says, "Got your T-shirt last week. Nice." Hope you like it. Um, let's get some suggestions in chat. Are we just gonna go with uh, with uh, with blame Howard as a, as as a suggestion, or what do you guys think? Put suggestions for the discount code in chat. Calvin says you're only seeing. Okay, let me check. Let me check what I see on my end. I see. 159. So on my end, it is it is good. We have Joe says Howard's fault. Blame Howie. Howard Kobas for ED. <laughs> Ammonia Planet 160. This should be the code. Damn it, Howard. Howard poop. <laughs> Can you take Apex to Colonia? That's also a good code. Um, <laughs> but no, you can't. I think I have an idea.
Uh, let me just go and and for the set. Of, come on, come on. I have I have an idea. I have a idea. And I can fly spaceships in the meantime. Just fly very slowly so we don't overshoot the planet or moon. It's a moon, not a planet. Uh, let me see, where is it? Promotion? And... Uh, where is it? There it is. Create promotion. Howard broke my ship. There we go. Howard broke my ship. There we go. And for that, as always, it is 10% off and that code will remain. Oh no, it's too long. It must only be 15 characters. Damn you, Howard! <laughs> then I don't know what I should put in. Howard for president. Howard broke Raxler. Howard broke code. I think that's that's too long as well. Howard. Howard broke code. Yes, it's oh, oh, it's perfect. Howard broke code. Okay, it's a weird one, but that's gonna have to do. Oh, hold on, I gotta stop my spaceship here. Howard broke code. That's what we're gonna go with. It ex it's exactly fifteen characters. So you can now go to D two E A, or you can also go just go to yeah D two E A store.com and you can use code oh I have caps lock on uh, use code Howard broke code and you get 10% off there we go and then you get 10% off and as always that is going to last you until the end of the live stream look at this pretty place I'm liking this. Let's scan this thing. And also for good measures, just give the ring a scan. Now, we have a six probe one, and this is difficult when you're dealing with um, with ring planets. Because you can't shoot under the planet. Like, I want to shoot one there, so we're going to have to probably move a little bit. Let's see how far we get on these five probes here. Yeah, we are three percent short for uh, from completing it. Well, that's okay. So, okay, that's what we're aiming for. Uh, let's just shoot one there. That should be fine. Did we hit the ring? What's going on with this ring? Like it must be scanned already then. Just a very boring ring. Hey, Not a single hotspot. Okay, um, let's just check again here. So what are we dealing with here? We have bacterium. Okay, there's only two on this one. And they're about the same. Okay, I hit it with the first try. Okay, fair enough. Then that's why. Um, let's just get rid of that one. 
And then, you know what I want? I want a place that's kind of high up so that we get the uh, the rings close to the um, close to the uh, to the surface but I also want to be close to the day night terminator so we get that light passing through the atmosphere so this area right here seems fine Do we get rings? Yeah, we get rings here. Look at that. <laughs> Just enjoy those colors. That is very pretty. I like it here. Now we just need a pretty plant as well. Then we got ourselves a perfect screenshot. And then get to slow us down. I think I found some plants. There's like one plant there. Let's see if we can't find a bigger cluster of them. Like that. That's perfect. Wiggle, wiggle. Damn you, Howard. Put a rock right where I want to land. Wiggle, wiggle. There we go. Got that view. This is a very, very pretty planet. I like it here. I could settle there, yeah. It's maybe a bit barren, I don't know, but it is pretty. Very pretty. The only thing we're missing here is just a big old gas giant in the in the sky as well with some rings on it. That would be uh, that would be perfect. Is this yeah, the sounds coming from the plants. Can you hear it? Let me turn up the sound a bit for you guys.
I can turn up a little bit more, maybe. Can you hear it? They're singing. Oh, I forgot to apply it. Try nighttime audio, you can hear the ambience better. Really? Oh, wow, yeah, a lot. Yeah, nighttime is much better. There they are, singing. I almost just want to like place the camera here, like find a really good position to put the camera in, like that, and then you just record like two hours of it and then put it up as like a elite ASMR sounds that you just sit and listen to. Yeah, but if we have to do that, we can't leave this place now, because, I mean, we can fight, we can walk on the planet, but... Record two minutes and do a loop. Okay, you know what? We're just gonna record a couple of minutes of it, and then we're gonna try to see if we can uh, oh, if we can loop this. Got an ad for for s Secret Lab, which has new skins for their chairs apparently, so you can buy like covers for them. Um, main screen may flash for a second. Just don't copy claim. What do you mean? <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna mid-roll ads into an ASMR video. <laughs> it's not my first day on YouTube. Um, I am just going to make sure I have... Hold on, before we do this. Just open whatever, like, notepad. Not that we need it, but it's just so that I can click out of the game, so that I don't have... If I have just... Probably if you do longer recordings, you need to loop. If you have just the slightest amount of drift on one of your sticks, it will show up in a loop, and then your whole loop is ruined. Okay, good. That's there, so that's fine.
get you guys back and then we're going to get back in game I think this view here is pretty good oh, oh I, need to, I need to do something I need to go and select a notepad so that I don't drift and now we can start recording and I can of course record without recording my own voice, so I'm not going to talk over my ASMR video. Frontier has the musical and... and visual copyright, but if that was a problem, then Frontier would copyright claim like the last 1000 videos I uploaded they would copyright claim this live stream right now if that was a problem make a live desktop yeah It needs to be a little bit more than two minutes, I think. I think we're gonna need, like, at least five, ten minutes, so that you don't, because you had a very distinct crackle sound there. And if that comes every two minutes, you're gonna notice that it's gonna, it's, it's looping. Um, and there's also, like, a, getting that, getting that loop to be seamless is a whole, like, yeah. Clean out your little square, then full screen. No, no, so I'm, I'm recording it right now as a, as a clean recording, right? Um, that means that the recording I'm doing right now is without my voice, it's without my face cam, and without all that, it's just, it's just video capture. Um, you can't see it because I'm recording over on the stream PC, so that's where the capture card is. Um, okay, Michael, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be a problem um, with Frontier. But thanks for the, uh, for the heads up. See, that's the crackling sound again. More citizens says, well, as to know what he's doing, and also he has a good lawyer, exactly, a marriage to a lawyer. Now, uh, and, and if, so, I have a decent contact with Frontier, so it's not gonna be an issue. Um, Is it already a loop then? I'm not sure. Is that Andromeda on the horizon? No, that's the local star. That's the singing. Yeah, I'm just gonna wait a bit. But I don't think this does loop, actually. I think it's just randomly generating the sounds. So I don't think, I mean, we saw it with the, um, what was it that Canon tested that took like, they recorded 48 hours or 24 hours or something, almost, and didn't find a single loop. That was the um, uh, unclassified relics. They recorded the sound from the unclassified relics. No, that, that was not the relics, it was the, uh, the, uh, the obelisks, yeah, the obelisks 
where they recorded sound from the same obelisk for like hours and hours and hours and it didn't loop, indicating that it is somehow procedurally generated sound. Yeah, I did realize that it is darkening that the sun is setting. Um, so what I will have to do is I'm going to have to extract the audio separately. And then, because the audio and the video doesn't necessarily have anything to do with each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the video, I'm going to take the audio and loop that. And then I'm going to play the video forward and then play the video backwards. And then play the video forward, backwards, forward, backwards. So it just basically plays back and forth all the time. Um, and by doing so, I can ensure that there's not going to be any seam when I swap over because I'm basically just the video is just beginning to play backwards all of a sudden. But because things are changing so slow, nobody's going to notice unless they speed the video up by times 40 or something. I think next time we add a kind of very even area. When there's not too much stuff going on in the sound, I'm going to stop the recording. Wait for the singing to be over. Here's good. Very quiet right here. I'm gonna kill the recording. Recording is stopped. Should we go and make a quick video? Just do a very quick edit of it? That could be fun, couldn't it? Oh! Loud! Loud noises! Pull that back, pull that one back. I'm just gonna go into the ship just, you know, for good measures. second and I'm just gonna very quickly move some uh, some files over to a server and 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 some other like we need the recordings over on uh, on my server so we have access to it so we're just gonna go with here videos elite dangerous uh, and let's just make a folder called ASMR and we're gonna call this one for singing plants and move that file in there it's not too big it's only three gigs that's nothing Okay, I'm gonna jump over here while I just get a few things ready over here. Um, I'm gonna need a few things. Give me a second here, I'm just gonna... I have not really prepared to go in and do editing now, so it's gonna be a little, uh, little impromptu here, that's okay. Um, elite ASMR singing plants, and this file is gonna be ASMR singing plants. Okay, got that. We need an editing program, and we need Audacity to uh, to extract this stuff. Okay, I think uh, I think we're ready now. Are we ready now? We are ready now. Okay. 
So now I can get you guys back here. And then if I put myself, where's my least intrusive? Least intrusive in that corner, I think. Yes, okay. So here we have our recording. We have Audacity here in the back. Um, first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna go and extract the audio from the, um, from the video file. So we have that as a separate audio track. And while that thinks about that, we are gonna go and open up our new Project, uh, Elite Dangerous ASMR Planet, Singing Planets. Here's our new thingy. Okay, so we don't really need like the frame and the camera insert track. We don't need that. We do need the audio track. Let's put, pull that up to zero dB. And we don't need the intro outro track either. But we are going to need Actually, you know what, the video track, we're going to mute that and we're going to make a separate audio track for the extracted audio. And then we're going to get rid of that there. Okay. Did, okay, so Audacity has figured it out now. We've imported our audio. I'm going to do all the editing of it if that's needed over in, uh, in that. I just want to extract it into, uh, into the folder so that I have it. I know I could do this in the software as well, but I don't wanna. And we're gonna save that there as a WAV file. Export that. And we don't need the project file for that. Okay, let's get the video in. Let's get the audio in. There we go. Okay, so first step first, get the video in there. Do you want to change that? No, I do not. So this one is just the video now, and if we scrub through the video... Oh, that's not what I wanted. We might be able to see some slight movements. That's actually very stable. You can see some slight movements on the star. It's not a lot. I want to change this up a little bit, though. Um, stop. Because I want to make it pop a little bit more than it actually maybe it's here on the on the on the videos so maybe we're just gonna do a quick um i want to do a quick level adjustment and i want to do a color correction on it so for the level adjustment i'm just gonna like get some more contrast in there and for that i think i'm just gonna pull up the saturation that might have overdone it a little bit but something around there looks pretty good to me that's fine so we have this audio track which is currently muted which we can't hear anything here so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna basically make a copy of this put it out there right click reverse it and now we have the same clip and the seam between these two here should not really exist because now it's basically just playing the same you can see here if we scrub through this clip here fast you can see the sun is now rising okay so now that we have those two we can take everything here put it at the end and then we just keep repeating this for like two hours two hours Picture looks too warm for the sound you have. Uh, okay, we can do a quick uh, color, color, color. Uh, a second color corrector, maybe. And I want to have the temperature. You can just. Didn't it have like a dedicated color temperature? Uh, No, it's not tracking. Didn't it usually just have a... You can maybe do it on a color curve. That should actually do it. And then just take the red and just... Come on. I mean, we can pull a little bit of the red out of it. 
Now it's maybe a little bit too green. So pull the green out as well. So before and after. I actually like it better like this. And to be honest, it's an ASMR video. People are not going to sit and watch it for two hours anyway. So now comes the interesting parts. And I made that into a video track. It was supposed to be an audio track. There we go. And that is to get this thing looped correctly. I want to start with the with the singing, so we're gonna cut the audio, pull that back there. Hmm, it's a little noisy. Like there's a lot of like sounds like wind noise. No, I didn't scan the plan. We're gonna go back. I am gonna give this a slight boost in volume. Now the question is, can we make this, because the thing is, if we do it like this, just put them right after each other, it's going to be noticeable when it swip, swips over. Let's try. Yeah, you hear that? That's very noticeable. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to utilize the fact that the start of this was also very, like, bland. And just have a, like a 20 second overlap maybe is overdoing it. Um, oh. But I guess with a five-ish second overlap, you're not going to notice. Yeah, see? Nobody's going to notice that. Very gradual five-second overlap between the two. And we are golden. You're not getting the audio from the edit? You can't hear the recording. What? Why? That is so weird. Uh, why are you not getting that audio in? It should be coming in through... Hmm. Let me check. Oh, how about now? That was better. Okay, sorry. That was meh. Okay, sorry about that. So what I was saying before was if I just put these two audio tracks next to each other, you can hear the difference. Can you hear that? Do you think we should try to get rid of some of that noise in the background? Like all that? Not remove it, just tone it down a little bit. I think it's a little bit too much, if you ask me. I was gonna... Transfer this over again. I 
I'm gonna try to see if we can tone down the wind noises. I'm not gonna completely mute them, but I just wanna pull them down. There we go. Okay. Let's try this. So we have... Now we're just gonna check that we actually get audio from this. Let me see here. Okay, yes, you have audio. Nice. Okay, so what I want to do is... I want to find an area that's very even. Where not a lot is happening. You can see that there are suddenly a lot is happening, right? We have... Maybe this area here. Yeah. So this area here is pretty much just wind noise, right? And we're gonna go up and we're gonna pick that up as a noise reduction pattern. And then we're gonna try to... And we're not gonna go noise reduction by 48 dB. Let's just pull it back to like 10 dB maybe and try that. And then we're going to go and normalize it to minus 3 dB. Okay, I'm just going to try and do the noise reduction slightly more. Let's just Pull up to 20. Do an ND pass. I assume... You do not mean neutral density pass. Oh, oh we already done that. We need to... We need to normalize it. So now you see we zoom out, like the places where stuff is happening is a lot more noticeable than it was before. Ah, noise reduction, yeah, yeah. Here the, the wind is a lot less. Yeah, I've got to check the highs here. Yeah, I need some EQing. You might have overdone it with a 20, I think. Let's try 15. Normalize it. That's a spare So just to compare, 
This is that same section. Can we... Be full. Yeah, the crackling is still very loud, like this here, right? Can we use the crack? No, we'll probably try that with a, like, a, we're just gonna run a test, but I think what we might be able to do to get the crackling away is just find the places where, where it's, it's there and then use their click removal. Um, that should. And compare it to before. Might actually be able to do that a little bit more. Max spike with. Yeah, I think I don't know. I don't want to move too much of it. I kind of like it here. I just want to listen to this part here. Yeah, there's the singing. So what did you want? Oh, what did you, what do you suggest, uh, Imminer, for EQing? Oh, we gotta find a better EQer because that one sucks. Um. This should be like a filter curve. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. This is my usual speech booster. Uh, if you just flatten that, so... You suggest we would boost the, uh, boost the base a bit. And then the mids, so we're talking like here, needs to come down a bit. Minus like 12 and then keep the higher end from like a thousand dB. Keep that, something like that. This is that crack we listened to before. Yeah, too much on the high end now, right? It's too squeaky now. But I like the sound. I like the sound of the... Um, So pull that squeakiness down a bit. Listen to it again. We'll normalize it when we're done. Okay, I kind of like it here. Just want to listen to that sing there at the end. Okay. 
can we just quickly go and do a normalize on it so we get the oh there's a big spike there You would just add volume first. So... Yeah, undo normal and amplify. How much do we need to amplify it? 5 dB maybe to start with. New amplitude peak. Minus three. That's one of the quiet sections. Listen to it just before it gets loud here. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna save this project. Um, just so that I have the project and go back and work with it later. Yeah, it sounds more, it didn't sound like, before it really sounds like, like peaks, but, but now it more sounds like, yeah, somewhat crackling with, with like paper or something. Okay, let's just say that this is where we're going to be for now. Yes, and also like it's audio gets transferred from one PC to another and then through our streaming software then compressed to hell on YouTube. So, so. I, yeah. Let's jump back into Vegas. So we overwrote that, so now that should be the new one we have here. So there was one thing, and that is the start of this was very boring, I recall. So let's see how that is here. Yeah, so there I already cut that part out. So now all I need is just to take this. And add it like a million times over. Copy that. One more. And there you have it. Then maybe just trim it down to two hours. Where's the two hours mark? Two hours mark is there. So that becomes an exactly two hour video. No, sorry, two hour mark is there. And there's two hours. And we can get rid of the rest. There we go. That's just gonna take forever to render. <laughs> gonna do that some other time. I don't wanna sit here and do 
live rendering. Now, you do not have audio twice now, do you? You do have audio twice. That is... Hold on. Do you guys have game sound right now? I don't believe you do. Do you guys have game sound? Something is really messed up with some of these, uh, with the setup of these channels. It should be there. What's going on with my audio routing? <laughs> I, I make a messed up my routing tables. Okay, now you have game sound. Damn you, Howard. Howard broke my routing tables. I need to go and check that. What? No drops? Nope. Frontier has not enabled that. The game is very loud when you're in night mode. All the ambient sounds are just super loud. Yeah, I know we changed it to nighttime mode. Yeah, I'm just gonna set my audios back as it were before. With that kind of there, and that in... I think you just put it in full range. I kind of missed the nighttime mode. I don't know. I might actually, I could get used to it. It's gonna take some time to play around with, with with sound levels and stuff, but I could get used to it. Let's go and find some more of these. Yeah, I, I don't know. I could kind of get used to the night mode. find a place to put this thing down. It's a lot of rocks around here.
And I don't really care much for scanning the bacteria thing, so I'm just gonna go and get back in the ship and fly someplace else. Scan the last one, make sure we get enough distance. And I don't think that's this planet done. plants there right ahead and a nice flat area to land in There we go. And we're done here. There was one more planet in the system. But I forgot which one it was. It must be this one. 10J. I think that one has plants on it too. Let's go check that. It was a 10G. Voices are very low now. It was 10J. Yes. I thought because it must be a atmospheric planet for there to be plants and it must be landable. Oh yeah, yeah, we wanted to look at the gas giant it's, uh, itself. The gas giant was pretty. That one there was pretty. Um, let's go by and just take a quick look at that and see what we got. And, um, and then we're gonna head all the way out to that moon. And take a closer look at what that has to offer. Can you see what I mean about my exploration trips can sometimes take a, a, a while? We, the first hour of the stream, we just blew through systems at, at, at a rapid pace. And then you come across one system and then you spend two hours just exploring it. That's one of the reasons I love Elite. Which one? Hold on. While we're flying out there, because we have quite a distance. Um, I wanted to take a look at the, um, the Aurora map here. Because I think it was this one that had a, had a captured body. Yeah, look at that. So you have the system there, which is also in itself on a really weird orbit. You can see how that's like way off from everything else. That is so weird. This system is odd. Is that the same with planet 10? That's even further out. Because that's also all for like a really odd angle. Almost like they're captured. But captured gas giants? I don't know. But surely, there is no way that these gas giants were formed as part of the system. You just move down to that corner again.
because it would have required a tremendous, tremendous amount of force to pull gas giants out to these extreme orbits so far off the rest of the system plane. So, so the only way I can see that these would have ended up in the system like this would be if they're captured gas giants. But captured gas giants, again, are quite rare because smaller planets, which have lighter mass, you can have if two stars pass close to each other, they could be flung out because they're, they're, they're small, they're light, you just like go whoop and they're gone, right? But gas giants, they're big, they're heavy. You need some serious forces going on um, if you want to have, it, it could be a disturbance in, in the accretion disk um, early in the in the in the systems like where the system was forming, two systems combining. It could be it could be a system um, a merge between two stars. That's also an option. Star goes yoik! Stars goes yeet! One gas giant to another system. So I don't know. Yeah. Merging of two stars could be. But then again, if it was merging two stars, you would imagine that the forces, the, 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 the tidal forces in the center of the system would be extreme. So why are the center planets completely fine and completely stay within their orbital plane, but only the outer planets? The fact that it's only the outer planet that get moves indicates that something big moved out in the outer section of, this, of the system, disturbing the orbits of those two planets. So I would say that it is more likely that instead of being a, 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 a merger that the, the, at some point were in that plane. And then, as, as Gas113 uh, says, Stargoid comes by and just like rips them out into weird orbits. No, but he goes, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have, oh, that's a very thin ring. You wouldn't have the, if the inner planets were captured, they wouldn't be in this nice plane. They would have all kinds of weird orbits, right? I like that. That's a pretty gas giant. Rings a little underwhelming. Yeah, but again, wondering, wondering gas giants. I uh, okay, we don't know, but my from what I know, wondering gas giants should be quite rare. Again, because they're big and heavy, so for them to be ejected from a system requires a lot of force. What's the age of the, age of the star system? Hmm. So 5.2 million years and we're dealing with a K-class star. Hold on, let me just um, close all this. Close that. Uh, let me just quickly go and, uh, and find a HR diagram for you guys. That's a good was a good one. That's only part of it. There's the good good HR diagram. 
No, come on. I want to see image. Here we go. That's it. So, HR diagram. We are dealing with a, what do we say, solar masses. We are at a K-class star at around one solar mass, right? A little bit less. So we have one solar mass. There's the sun. So that means we are looking at, we are down in this area here. That's light. K? No, oh, that's okay. That makes sense. Why do we have a... Hold on. God damn it. <laughs> it didn't apply to the route. Okay. Go and check this pretty thing. Yeah, it's 5.2 billion, I think. No, but what I wanted to see was like expected. Expected life for these. So, the sun is expected to live for like million, 10 to the, lifetime is 10 to the 10 years, 10 to the 10 years, that's 10, that's 10 billion years expected life. So this is slightly longer. Not a lot, but a little bit, so... Now, yeah, 10 billion years. So it should be halfway through its life. Ish. Yeah, a, a, a close by black hole or a close by other massive star. And given where we are in the galaxy, it wouldn't be unheard of. I mean, we are still quite in a quite dense area, so it wouldn't be unheard of that you would see stars passing closer, or at least it would be more likely that you would have it, uh, have stars passing uh, passing closer, uh, passing close to each other. What are we dealing with here? Six probes? It's just, am I in the right corner? I can't remember. And I know that, but there's still a forge often, like, it, it makes plausible systems. Obviously, it, it makes sometimes it makes weird things, but in most cases, it makes very plausible systems. This one is on the edge. Perfect hit on the back there. So we get bacterium and. and whatever that is. I was about to say if if you don't if you don't want nerdy stuff you come to the you, you came to the wrong live stream. Do you think what do you think is the most broken system? The most broken system. You have these like um, what was what we visited re visited recently uh, the Dire Awesomes, for instance, where you have a gas giant basically orbiting around a neutron star with an orbit time of well minutes. That wouldn't happen. Like, like uh, that thing, that gas giant would be torn to pieces by tidal forces. Mid, yeah, okay. Midrand Hollow was a was a coding error that was left in because the community loved it. So that is that is purposely broken.
Um, Hot Jupiter, yeah. There are some other ones where it like makes things that are just doesn't really make sense. My universe is quite bright. Mine is very dark. That's because I'm very close to the core. As you move closer and closer to the center, there are more and more stars. That's why that everything is so bright out here. Or in here. Oh, this is all purple and stuff. Yeah, last one was pretty. I didn't go for a sunset on this one either. I just wanted to find a... I don't want to find that plant and scan it. So let's just put landing gears down so we can slow down a little bit. I think I found them there, right there. There's also some out there. Let's go for those. Uh, the same as on the other planet. That is boring. Uh, Dunkle is, uh, is uh, a little under the weather today, so uh, he won't uh, he won't be here. So I'll have to manage you guys. Yeah, copycat planet. Look, same plants. that thing in there. Nope. Whee! Can we get two this time? One, two, and oh, we shot a little bit. Oh, nailed it. Sample. See, we do a backflip. Oh, not the prettiest landing ever. Gonna try that again. Much better. I'm breaking the SRV. There's one there. Scan that one. Bye. 
Nice! Oh, my ship is not is still within range, so we can actually just drive back. Well, we could try at least. All over the place now. Oh, oh, this planet, even the drive assist off, is still slipping all over the road. Get a bit of air time here. So you hit one little rock and then it just goes 90 degrees to the side. There it is. No open fly cable SRV, yeah. Since it's November, you should really put winter tires on your SRV. <laughs> I guess. Hold on, what's wrong here? That's okay. Oh, there's a whole little forest off in there. <laughs> we have another Howard in chat. Don't you worry, we're just blaming Howard or Connor for everything. Uh, okay, that planet, that was that system, that took like two hours. <laughs> it was a fun system. How far did we make it today? Starting here in the Sagay area. We made it about 1300 light years today. We could have made it further, but we found a funny system. We stuck around for a bit, but I am going to uh, I'm going to call it for tonight as we're getting close to um, as we are getting close to midnight. So I just want to say a huge thank you for all you guys uh, who've been watching. Um, next week I'll be back on my usual live streaming schedule on Tuesdays. So this was just a one week thing. Um, so yeah, I'll see you, uh, see you next week. I'm just gonna see if we can find someone to raid on Twitch. If there's like a a smaller streamer, maybe if there is, even if there's someone like maybe out doing some exploration, that would be fun. Uh, let's see. Let's see. What do we have? We have. Oh, we have. Uh, we have Malik. Science, law, aliens, and that sounds like it. we're gonna send you guys over to Malik. Malik is a good guy. Okay. Let me just get this raid going. Slash raid over on Twitch. Malik VR. Okay, that's been for today. Thanks for watching. Really hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. I'm really happy we went to find an interesting system here. 
Um, on your way out, if you haven't already, please go down and like the live stream. And if you really want to help me out, you can go and you can hit that subscribe button as well. And um, I'll see you guys uh, next week. I might be hanging out over on Discord a little bit afterwards. So if you want to come and say hi, then it is at discord.d2a.com. Thanks for watching. Fly safe.